YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with the next episode in my Let's Make a Retro Game series uh, where I'm working through the steps on how to make a game for several retro systems um, using modern tools um, and that way hopefully lowering the entry point uh, for people to have a go at this. Um, you know, our first couple of episodes have been on setup and this one is um, on probably our last step of setup before we get into code proper. Um, but in this particular episode I will be um, giving you the templates for the first three systems uh, which are MSX, Original Spectre Video and ColecoVision um, so you're quite welcome to have a play with those um, <clears throat> but in this episode we, we need to set up a, um, a text editor um, add syntax highlighting so that um, it doesn't just look like plain text syntax highlighting helps visualising uh, what you're doing with the code and helps spot things uh, then we're going to um, set up the assembler, which will turn the Z80 code, with Z80 in the, for these systems, um, into the ROM file that you can then run in the emulator and have a play with. Um, and we add a, um, a keyboard shortcut inside the text editor, so you can press one key, compile your program, and see the results. If there's any errors, uh, you can double click on the error and go straight to the error. So it just makes it more convenient and much easier than it was back in the day. Back in the day, you used a text editor on the very machine itself. It was all just in one color. Um, it was quite slow and cumbersome. Then you had to exit that from a command line, you know, compile. So that's you know fun doing it on the original machine, but it just makes the barrier a little bit high for those wanting to get started on this. And if you've got modern PCs, to this why not use them? Alright, so without further ado, let's get straight into it um, and let's set up our various components. Okay, so our first step um, is obviously to install the, our text editor. Now the one I'm going to be showing is one called Context. It's a free text editor um, and it, ha it, it, uh, it allows you to use highlighters. So for different files, you can have different colors um, highlighted throughout the text just to make it easy to read. And it also allows you to launch external applications and capture the output and uh, be able to enact on that. So it's perfect for our means. Of course, there are other text editors out there. Uh, Mac users will have completely different ones, but there are quite a few Windows ones. But this is one that's free and not too hard to use. It's not the best text editor in the world. There's a couple of things about it that annoy me compared to other text editors. But those other text editors don't do these couple of things. Um, that we need to make our development environment simple. So after you've installed it, I'm not going to show you how to install the program, you should have your context icon on the screen. So double clicking that brings up the, um, the application window. And the very first thing we need to do is to add our syntax highlighting. So just shut context for the minute and then bring up your uh, explorer and depending on whether you have um, a 32-bit version of Windows 7 or Vista or XP or you have a 64-bit version of Windows, it will depend which directory you're going in. So on a 64-bit one, you're going to Program Files x86. Um, for a 32-bit uh, Windows, you will only have Program Files, so you go in there. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So you come in there and then you go into the Context directory and then the highlighters directory. And what you should do is grab the highlighter file that I've supplied in the downloads. And um, you need to, this is a protected directory on a 64 bit machine, uh, you need to provide permission and copy the highlighter into uh, this directory. And then it'll be available in the, um, in the editor. Okay, so shut that down and then we run context again. And what I'll do is I'll open one of the templates. Um, I've got the Coleco one here. Right, and you can now see that it is all different colours. I'm not going to explain what all of the code means. There's a fair bit of code there. Um, and uh, this template will basically uh, boot up on each of the three different machines, um, set up some you know, things you, you need to set up on each of the machines. Uh, we'll, we'll add one sprite, a bit of text on the screen, which basically says template, and the ball, the sprite, which is a ball, will bounce around the screen. 
so it just gives you something to have a look at uh, when you get it loaded so but this is the first step to get our um, you know syntax highlighting and it just makes it nicer that you can you know um, numbers and commands and things that are remarked out and it's not part of the code are all separated and it just makes it a lot easier uh, to read and use right, so next we need to set up our Z80 assembler um, what I suggest is you um, grab the zip file uh, that's included in our downloads and grab the contents and place them in a directory called TNI ASM 045 uh, that's the version number, it's actually a beta version of the assembler um, and put it on your local disk drive C uh, you can of course put it in a different place um, you'll just need to adjust paths in the uh, rest of the tutorial. Other than that, it's very simple. All that will be in there is the actual assembler application itself, which is very small, and a little text file that tells you about the cross assembler itself. As you can see, it covers a few different versions of the Z80 there. So that step's very simple and um, shouldn't take you too long. But as long as you put it somewhere on your hard drive and you know where that path is, so this particular is C backslash TNI ASM 045 and that'll get us get it in the right spot for our next step. For our next step we're going to add um, an execute key um, so that when we press say F9 on the keyboard here it will actually um, execute the Z80 assembler, compile our comp code and tell us any errors. So what you do is you go into options environment options and you get uh, this dialog here and then you go to execute keys and click the add button now this puts in here a little box and what you do you put the um, different extensions that we're going to use so I normally put Z80 and SM so that because you can have different execute keys depending on the um, you know the type of code you're working on and then you click one of the keys I use F9 because it's the first one and we you can use the dot dots here to go and select where we want to go so we go to our C drive TNISM and grab the assembler now there's various um, parameters here that we can um, you know enter to make things work better so we want to start it in the path of the current file that we're editing. Um, the parameters we want to add is the name of the file we're editing. Uh, we leave window normal. Uh, the hint, obviously for the button, is going to be compile. Um, save current file before execution is good. We don't need to use short DOS names um, unless you're on um, you know a 16-bit version of Windows You're using this on a really old version of Windows you need to use short dots names of course um, so capture we want to capture the console output so what that means because the uh, the assembler is a console command if you ran it normally it would compile and display a whole lot of stuff um, about you know how the compile went so the really good thing about this text editor is it allows you to grab bits using certain commands. Now it did take a little while to figure this out. I can't remember where I got it from originally. So if you type this in, um, it'll find this bit of text um, and grab, so I think percent %L is the current line number and percent %N is the file name with path. So yeah, it looks for those particular thing matches them. Right, we want to scroll the console to the last line so you can see the end of the output which will be where our errors are so we press OK right so we press the F9 key and we get the output from the converter from the assembler down here so you can see I showed you what it was executing it then we have our pre-processing pass 1 pass 2 generate output it tells you how long it took and execution finished so in this case we didn't get any errors um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just randomly scroll down our code here and I'll add a new line and put just put some text this is not a proper statement information mark okay we'll press F9 
and you notice we now have a syntax error on line 154 and there's the name of the thing and it says illegal text so it gives us the error but when we double click there it takes us straight to that line that saves a lot of time <coughs> when you're um, writing code and debugging uh, now we can undo this incorrect statement right all undo we'll press F9 and we'll compile it again and all back to normal so now let's see what the uh, just to give a demonstration of what the template does which I've sort of done in previous episodes but it's nice to um, to see it again so this particular one is our Coleco template so we want to go and run our emulator in this case I'm using the blue MSX that we set up previously we need to go check our emulations, make sure it's set to Coleco. Go to our cartridge slot, insert. Was that a demonstration before? Go to our directory. Grab our template ROM that the assembler created. By the way, I've just added a bit of sound in there testing some things, but at the end of the day we have a paddle that we can move back and forth, so we're simulating joystick input. Not that we've done collision detection or anything like that. We have a ball that makes a sound every time it hits a boundary and bounces around. So it just gives you something to have a bit of a play with until our next episode where we'll start getting in and working out what all the bits of code do. And then we can start putting our game together. Right, so um, hopefully that is all of our tools that we need set up uh, ready to go so we can get right into making our game. So next episode I do need to obviously take you through um, some of the Z80 code. So we'll walk through that those templates uh, on one of the machines and just break it down into um, particular segments and I'll talk about the gobbledygook that is the Z80 assembler um, so you can get a start. I don't have any um, you don't have to completely understand all of the code to follow along um, but hopefully the way I break it down and explain what each bit does it'll help you uh, learn you know the various things and I'm not going to go through the entire Z80 all the codes in the in the Z80 or all the other processes for that matter we'll only do things from a practical basis and look at each um, piece of code that we use to do a particular thing I find it helps um, people learn when they're, you know, they're making something practical. Um, so we'll do a, an episode of that. We break down the template, and then uh, we'll strip the template back to a base, and we'll start adding the bits of our game. So we'll get straight into making our game. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Make a Retro Game, and um, I look forward to joining you in our next episode soon. So thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Thank you.